Are you new to bourbon and not really sure what whiskey is right for you? Well, stick around because that's what we're covering today. Welcome back to Neat Bourbon. My name is Tanner, and today we've got a different style of video for you. Now, I've gotten a lot of feedback that people wanted me to make some like bourbon basics videos. If they're not really sure about all the lingo that I've been using in past videos. So I've decided to create a mini series where I kind of break down, you know, the basics of, you know, where bourbon comes from, what are the difference, differences between bourbons, rums, ryes, scotches. So to kind of arm you with a little bit of a knowledge base. So if you're going into a store and trying to make a selection, hopefully this video will help you. <clears throat> now, First things first, like the three three major brown distillate spirits, you got your rums, you've got your scotches, and then you've got bourbons. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lump bourbons and rice together for the sake of simplicity with this. Now, just kind of like looking at these three, there are gonna be flavors that are inherent to these bottles just because of the mash bill. Now the mash, mash bill, is basically what are the ingredients used to basically ferment and generate an alcoholic distillate basically like the white dog uh, white dog mash which is basically a clear distillate that then goes into the barrel for the aging process to begin now with rums that mash is going to be created from sugar cane which is going to provide inherently some more sweet vanilla flavor forward notes so yeah, I mean, you get it's a very sweet, sugary forward profile, getting, you know, a lot like more like vanilla bean form in terms of like the sweetness coming off of this. You know, I mean, rums are great, you know, very popular, you know, rum and cokes, a very, you know, sugary forward drink. Um, you know, a lot of tropics use them because, you know, creating rum is, you know, very inexpensive because sugar cane grows wildly and it's, uh, it's a cheap thing to create a mash out of. Um, next, you've got scotches. Um, and so, <clears throat> scotches, the pri primary grain in their mash bill is going to be a, a barley. So now, the flavors are kind of, you know, endemic to the, the, the barley grain. You're going to get a lot more of, you know, your peatiness, like moss, smoke. Um, those are really common characteristics that you'll find. Yeah, definitely a lot of like earthy tones, you know, coming through here, which is going to be that peat, which gives you more of like a smokiness. You don't get quite the same level of like sweetness as you will at all from a rum, nor with from like a corn that you'd get from, you know, a, a bourbon. So you've got super sweet with the rum. So if you've got a sweet tooth, enjoy low proof stuff. Rum is going to be right up your alley. If you're into, you know, like more mezcal tequilas, if that floats your boat, or if you think you might like more of like earthy tones in the distillate that you're drinking, you know, the the scotches would be great as well. And then coming over to to bourbon. Now, now there are five things by law <clears throat> that need to be that need to happen in order for this distillate to be considered a bourbon. So number one. The barrels must be aged in the United States. Number two, the barrels used to age the distillate must be new charred oak barrels. Can't be any other kind of wood and they cannot be used before. Number three, the barrel entry proof of the distillate. So when the aging process begins, the entry proof of that distillate cannot exceed 125 proof. Now it can go below, it just can't go above 125 proof. Uh, fourth, the mash bill of a bourbon has to be comprised of at least 51% corn. And then lastly, the only thing that can be used to de-proof or dilute any of the bourbon can be has to be water. So nothing else can go into this bottle outside of the mash bill and water. Now when you're looking at the mash bill of a bourbon, there's a lot you can dissect from that. In terms of what are the different flavor profiles, you know, you can come to expect. 
Um, so being 51% corn, it's going to be inherently sweet. And then you're going to have a secondary flavoring grain, which is primarily used either rye or wheat. Wheat is going to be a little more grain forward in most cases. It can sometimes come off as a very, like a sweeter wheat. And then rye is going to give you more of those herbal greenery, you know, minty notes in, in a bourbon. And then lastly, you're going to have some small percentage of malt. So usually you're going to have, you know, a combination of three grains in a bourbon. But, you know, a new thing now is, you know, four grain bourbons. So that's what I wanted to cover with you guys today. I wanted to go over kind of some of the basics between what makes rum so sweet. It's the sugar cane and what makes scotch so, you know, smoky and a little, you know, smoky sweet you know, earthy, peaty, you know, it, it comes from all, all the malt in, in that mash bill. And then what makes, what gives bourbon kind of like a combination of, of both worlds is because you're getting the sweetness from the corn. You're also having a little bit of the malt. You have the rye and wheat as well. So you can really pull out, you know, a lot of flavor combinations from different bourbons, which is, you know, why I've been kind of running down that rabbit hole. You know, again, I don't have a glass for me today. But, uh, you know, if you've made it this far in the video, would you consider giving me a like? Would you consider subscribing? You know, once again, this is Neat Bourbon. My name's Tanner. And always pop the bottles and share the pours. And we'll see you in the next one.